dark. <laughs> like that. What is with this? We need a bit further. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of my channel. And um, yes, as you can see from the title, um, I feel like I've been wanting to film this video for really long. And um, I'm not sure how long the video is going to be, but I kind of wrote down like what I really want to talk about here. <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of do a bit of update of my life because I've been here for two years each already and as you all know um I got married recently uh, about three to four months ago held two weddings one in Korea one in Singapore and then went for a honeymoon in Indonesia came back and I'm about two and a half months into my last semester of school um, as a master's student in Korean University and um, yeah let me calm down <laughs> okay, before I start I wanted to just this is my dinner time so I just want to eat a bit first so I haven't eaten really anything today it's like kind of my first meal but since I gained weight so it's okay Jeanette must come in ramen right <laughs> eat first Mm. 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 Like chicken barfing that I we that Naughty got for me from the convenience store that day. It's my favorite. Mmm! Mm. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, you have noticed that um, I was kind of down for the last few days because some things happened and I suddenly feel like I need to film this video ASAP. reason why I want to do uh film it this time. But let me eat first. I eat ramen very fast on. Mm. Mm. Allow before I start I, I go on to talking again. Mm. <clears throat> In my opinion, that Korea has ever created. Mm. I'm so good at cooking ramen. Okay. Like I said, this video is a bit about um, an update with my life. And um, I'm filming this also because he's not here. And I don't really... Not say I don't want him to hear what I say, but I feel like if he's here, I wouldn't be able to fully express my thoughts to you all so um, I decided to film this actually two weeks ago when um, Naughty wasn't at home so because he went out for like some collaboration but I didn't, didn't manage to do it because I think for me when it comes to filming YouTube videos um, I have the tendency to neglect it in a sense that when I let's say I have a uh, free time two hours to do something I will stock up on doing my assignments first rather than film YouTube videos because I don't like to leave my stuff to last minute only when I have spare time that I do but then again when spare time comes there's always something to do so I feel really bad also that's why I'm very very thankful for you guys who still support me but I'm really really trying my best to come up with ideas and all and um, recent mukbangs have been a hit and I'm really really thankful that thank you so much for supporting me through the videos and um, I really appreciate it and I really enjoy creating those kind of content as well so I will still look forward to creating more content for you guys yeah firstly I just wanted to do an update about school okay why I wanted to do this is because um, I'm not sure if you remember but when I first moved into this house about two years ago I made a video yeah about three things you should be like reconsider before you come to Korea and study in Korea 
um i think at that time i was at a very very like low period of my life because um i just started school i just started school and um, it was really really tough because i couldn't really um adjust to the master's life firstly at the time i wasn't a very very big fan of like dealing with the new culture and stuff i'm just a very very rigid girl so um that's my personality fault but in addition to that i had to deal with the korean culture which is um something that i have experience with and the, ex the experiences that i have is not very pleasant i would say but of course it's really very personal so i cannot say the same for you guys um but for me because i think i was having a very hard time i felt like i really tried my best to put out to you guys what you should really really consider before you come to korea but um thinking back about the video again and today as i'm speaking to you i feel like i have grown a lot through the years and um i've learned a lot in coping with um how to adapt with culture how to like maneuver and navigate myself through um master's education or just school culture in korea be um, dealing with professors dealing with my friends doing my assignments and like the system and stuff like that so i would say um i can say confidently that after one and a half years of being in master's study yes it is still very 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 difficult so if you're watching this video and you're hoping that Jeanette will tell you that it's easier no it's not easier but um, I think humans always have an inner strength within them whereby they can sort of just get get by you know like just get by with it lah you know when things happen you think like you cannot take it but because it's just like way bigger than you think you just sort of get by it so right now here I can say that I'm very glad that my um, studies is coming to an end already. I still have one more semester, a PC semester where I write my paper. If it passes, please pray for me, guys. And that will be the end of my master's education. Um, but reaching this point, I would say that it has been very rewarding in the sense that I learned a lot and um, I chose to take this course in the first place because I wanted to know more about psychology and stuff and I did learn more about it. It's just that um, because everything is in Korean, I would say my learning is a bit short, short changed because I'm not really good in Korean, okay? So that's a uh, fault on my part. But um, I would say that maybe I'll read myself right now, probably about an 85, <laughs> 85 for surviving till now and I'm very thankful for the friends that I met along the way and um how they supported me and how they give me um encouragement because i'm the only foreigner in my lab or in my department so i'm really thankful for that um and also i learned a lot about time management i learned a lot about how to deal with my own expectations of myself um, i learned a lot about the korean culture also uh, overall because i study culture and social psychology right and um, I learned how to deal with um, things that happened to me that I never ever expected even from like the admin you know I always talk about the admin stuff or like um, being treated very differently in terms of like uh, because we have we are foreigners right so we always have a separate procedure to um, things in school so thus far I would say that my experience Will I regret it? I, I, mean, I mean, like right now, if you ask me, should I come? I will still really ask you to think twice. But personally, my walk here, uh, it's so hard to say. I mean, like two years ago, I would definitely say I regret it. But right now, I cannot say I regret it. Yeah, I cannot say I don't regret it, but I cannot say I regret it because it really built me as a person. And um, I think I learned a lot through this journey. So, um... That's really a quick update about my school. I will graduate next year, um, spring. So I really hope that that works out. So yeah, if you're watching this video and um, you want to hear something, I don't know, juicy about school and all that. I don't have stuff like that. My school friends, everyone is really, really nice. And I'm really, really thankful to have met all um, really beautiful people along the way. So yeah, that's my update about school. 
Well, mouth first. Mm. The second topic that I wanted to update you guys is my life and career. So as you know, a big part of my life um, is studying because I'm a scholarship student. But um, the other part of my life is also trying to live here as a foreigner and trying to adapt to the society and the challenges of being here and actually living here. Um, I believe that a very big topic about living in Korea when it comes to race, there is um, talks about how there are racism and stuff like that. But personally, I think because I'm Asian and I'm Chinese, Singaporean Chinese, I don't face any of that. I just hear about it. So um, my heart goes out to those who feel it in some way, discrimination in some way. But um, for me personally, I don't think there uh, it happened to me. So I would think also because I'm under the protection of Mr. Naughty, but sometimes I do feel that for foreigners, it's really hard to get like documents done and stuff like that because the process is a bit stricter and Koreans are still a bit, their system is still a bit um trying to catch up that there's a lot of foreigners coming in and stuff like that. So that's one part to it. But recently, um, when it comes to admin stuff, because um, recently I applied for my spouse visa and also um, registered my marriage in Korea, I was very, very worried because um, the past few um, experiences I have with admin, especially when it comes to immigration in Korea, it's really hectic and very tedious because you might forget this, forget that, and then when you make an appointment, you might have to wait again if you don't have the document and they chase you away on the spot. So. What happened was, um, in these two occasions, we really double check, triple check, quadruple check. What's after quadruple? So many times that Mr. Naughty got really frustrated with me. But because of that, I think because we were very, very detailed in what we do because of our past experience, everything was so smooth. We went there, we submitted, and everything was so fast. So basically, I feel like the hardest part about coping is to prepare it. And then once you get everything that you that they need from you, usually it comes out within a week or two. So I officially already changed to spouse visa um, in Korea. I don't face much issues about living in Korea because I kind of got used to it already. And to be honest, I think I can call this place my home. I think because for me, home is not really about a place, but it's where the heart is and where my family is. And right now, because I'm married, I think my family is with Mr. Naughty, so I can consider this my safe haven. Not that Singapore is not my home anymore. It's always It will always be my country. But um, I do get used to staying in Korea, and um, I do feel that it's a lot more comfortable now especially after marriage. So yeah, that's my life in Korea. So if you guys are thinking about coming to stay here and you want to know more about my experiences, how to do visa and stuff like that, maybe you can leave it in the comment section down below because I feel like my role here is to really let you know more about Korea and um, I will still do my best in this sense. Lah, okay, so part two, done. Okay, moving on to part three. I wanted to talk about my transition from dating to married life. I made this video also with Mr. Naughty at Incheon Airport about two and a half years ago. The time we still had blonde hair and stuff and I told you about our journey and how much it took for us to come to um, here and to be in one place and all this kind of stuff. And I do think about it occasionally, especially when it comes to hard times or when he's not around like now. I do look at our photos and I, I remember how tough it was and that's those kind of times I feel like I appreciate us a lot more but then you know as life goes you tend to forget right because everything is comfortable now and not that it's comfortable in the sense that we can just spend any how we want and stuff like that but then it's comfortable because um that was like the biggest hole in my life for six years that we couldn't be together in one place and there were so many obstacles to cross um, to get to where we are today and now finally when I like finish this race I think that's why it's very comfortable and because of that I think people yeah you know like people right like start to slack a bit and then forget and don't appreciate not so grateful so that's really on my part to really like to film this video so to remind myself that it was really really tough to get here but 
why I wanted to talk about this dating to married life transition is because I myself is is very um am very uh not shocked but like very like 신기해, 신기하다, 신기하다 뭐라 되지? Amused, amused, amused is a little bit okay. I'm losing my vocabulary so, but I'm just very like, wow, <gasps> like that also can ah, for like what has happened to both of us. So what the thing is, okay, so before we before marriage, right? Um, I mean, of course, we signed the papers earlier already. Um, we kind of stayed together and stuff. But I think in Korea, there's this thing whereby like. If you if you didn't do the kyolon shik, which is the wedding ceremony, you're not really considered married in the eyes of people. Legally, you are married because of the cert that you have, right? But in the eyes of people, people don't really recognize it as that yet. I think it's just a um, different culture. Okay, so because of that, um, I will say that um, the eyes of the society on us is very different. And um, especially for me, I do struggle, like I said, with Korean culture, right? So basically, I feel like on his family side, like you know, Singapore we a bit chillax. So like, even though you're not married, right? We treat you like you're gonna marry. Here yeah, it's not really like this. So um, it's just so amusing to me, and I'm really, really still shocked until today. But before that, um, I feel like whenever I like hang with the family, it's not that they don't know we're getting married or stuff. It's, or what lah, but then we have a whole ceremony, right? So they were a bit like not not that they treat me badly or anything, but then like there is always I always personally, emotionally maybe I feel this gap, um because they were all they will always say like da jungye kyoronshik habu la so like yeah I mean I get it, but then like there is always this um because you're not married yet ajik kajogi anya like anida you know so. Um, that was like a very um, grey area, a very MAH period for me and because of that, I think it really affected me a lot and I struggled a lot through that which is something that I will talk again later because it starts to get a bit deeper and emotional. Just <laughs> like that, why do I have to do this? But I've been here for a long time and I've been here with your son for so long already. Like, this my talk talk jangle like I don't understand and stuff like that. But of course I had to just you know go along with the flow, and uh, I'm not sure about you guys if you are a Singaporean wife or any kind of wife from any race that marry a Korean husband. Maybe you have a different experience from me because 가족마다 다르잖아. Like it's different, different family. There's a Korean culture of course, but there's a family culture also. So I would say this is maybe my husband's family culture. Um, so I had this period of like here, not here, not there, not here, not there, and because of that, um, I always felt like oh okay, you know, after I'm married, all this, um, I will be able to at least have like my position and I'll have my own say and this kind of stuff because we had to give in a lot at the beginning because we were not really married and because you're not married, he's still like part of his family kind of thing and I'm part of my family, so we kind of like separate person lah basically. But after married, then we become one family, ma correct by God's um. Like grace and, and and his view and stuff. So when I got married, okay, just that very day I got married. Uh, you know, like we did ceremony in Tegu. It was really fun, and I felt like that was really my dream wedding. Like having a wedding in the garden and stuff. Oh, I think about it, I still like it so much. Just after, like maybe shortly one week after or stuff like that, I think everybody started to change a bit. I'm not sure what changed. I don't know is it I changed or like people around me changed. Basically, I'm talking about Han's family because my family don't really care. I don't say they don't care but because they're so far away and they already love Han so more than me since 5 years ago so it doesn't really matter for him but for me, it's a bit different because like I don't know, maybe it's my own struggle and it's my own insecurity but a lot of things changed like the way that they call me also changed definitely because that's all the like there's names to call up basically and then um, that changed and then suddenly I got added into their family group chat and suddenly like a lot of things like a lot of emotions went through me and it changed a lot um, I mean I was added way later also but I think the way that they treat me a lot uh, uh, they treated me changed a lot because now I'm like their sister-in-law right his sister's sister-in-law and then I'm like their what's my name? I forget what's my name Daughter-in-law, oh my gosh, daughter-in-law. <gasps> to be honest, I was really touched and very thankful for that. And 
that is between the families, which was a very, very big shock to me. That, that thing that changed. But between me and Asa, because people were asking me like, hey, how's married life? Like, did anything change or anything? So I will always mention this, but actually, to be honest, between me and Hanson, nothing much changed. Because basically, we have a status, we wear rings. I call him my husband, he call me his wife now. But we seldom still don't say that because we just like naughty naughty each other and then we don't really we don't really onto those like formalities and stuff. So I can feel myself letting stuff go a little bit more. Like for example, I don't feel like I need to like hold and grab onto Hansel anymore. Like I used to be really sticky and I'm still very sticky, but I will try to rationalize and tell myself, Jeanette, you need to calm down. You're not a girlfriend anymore, you're a wife, nobody's gonna take him away and stuff like nobody's still your time and blah blah blah. And I can like, don't go out, you know, kind of thing. So I have this kind of authority, but although I was not abusive, okay. But then, like, I just, a lot of things change in between, inside me and my thoughts. But, um, apart from that, nothing much changed between us. And I'm very, very thankful because actually, um, Hansel does come to me once in a while. And he will tell me that he really enjoys married life. Although nothing changed between us, I think I just become less naggy because sometimes when things happen between us and because before we were married, I'll go to him and I'll be like, you know, what, you know, what? I will like try to pick up a fight with him. Lah. So I'm really sorry about that, babe. So if you watch this video, Sarangi. <laughs> that's the first two changes for dating to married life transition. And this one, I think you guys have been wanting to hear it for very, very long. So the last transition from dating to married life is having a kid. I wanted to address this, this part is because I think um, firstly, a lot of people have been asking us about kids and stuff and you can see that Hansel in his Instagram stories, if you follow him, he's very like like he's very active and very passionate about it. Like he really wants to have a kid and stuff like that. I think because recently he has been seeing his nephew and nieces, they're really so cute. Like there's Elsa and there's Paron and Seron and then they're far away. They cannot hang out with them but they look so cute because um, their, their pictures always come out in the family group chat. So he sort of changed his mind towards wanting a kid. He's telling me like, you know, when should we have a kid? You know, and uh, he'll ask me like, um, do you think this will be fun? This will be fun. He will, he will like just have his own imagination like oh you know next time if I have a kid but he always says stuff like I will throw the kid, I will throw the kid like he just but you know he's just trying to be funny but then I think he will be a really really good dad because he's he's funny and he's responsible he's very tintine, uh capable blah 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 okay whatever okay that all that, that good stuff but then the thing is with me <laughs> I've been struggling a lot, a lot, a lot about this. Okay, so, but before I move on, break time. I must finish this first. If not, this yagi is going to be a bit long. So, I think if I don't finish this, I won't be able to eat it later because it'll be too cold. I'm sorry, guys, it's a bit like um drama. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> I feel like my words are coming out really like shoo 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 because like I kind of organized all my thoughts this morning and I feel at peace so that I'm able to like say all this to you guys because honestly I've been praying a lot about it and um to start off uh last three days has been very 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 trying for me is because um me and Nasty um had a really big argument regarding having a child and um it's not that we they I didn't want a child or something like that but there were a bit of um how do I say miscommunication plus me on my part it was my fault because there was a lot of things that I put pressure on him and then it made him feel very unworthy and not enough always because of what I say and what I feel. So um, before I dive into that, I wanted to talk about what happened, okay? So basically, I'm very thankful still that you guys are very concerned about me, but I I know it's very childish to post like I'm doing badly and stuff, but to be honest, I just wanted Mr. Naughty to know that I'm struggling also. That's why I put it on Instagram. You know me lah, I always just upload whatever there is also, but yeah, well, that kind of thing. So um, the last two weeks has been very trying because Recently, after stepping to marriage, I've been thinking like, I have, I've been thinking like, oh, okay, 
now is the time whereby I can say what I want, do what I want, I can live my own life. It's comfortable and everything, and no one's stopping me and stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, yes, finally, all my sacrifices, like I made it, I'm here, and I can like really just do anything I want right now. So with that thought, I think like it really hurt Mr. Naughty a lot in terms of like um the first thing that he reminded me was how can you say that you want to have your own life? Um, we are married now and if you're thinking like that, then don't you think it's gonna be very hard for us? And when he said that, I I kind of woken up and I, not immediately of course, like it happened, it took him some time to say it because the seriousness of the problem got worse. And then his patience like decreased and I just keep like chill on him, like keep poke him so he, he knows lah, okay so. I also know right now. Thought about what he said and I felt like, yeah, you know God, let us be married so that we can become one, right? How can I say that now I want to be my own one kind of thing? I mean, no, I'm not I'm not saying that I shouldn't live my own life. I should live my own life also and try to make myself a better person, but I should always put my family's interests before myself. I put the interests of my family uh, at the center of like um, a lot of my decisions, but I haven't been doing that to be honest. So that's one part. And the second part is um, we did talk about like having a kid and stuff like that and I don't really want to go too much into details about it because um, we're still trying to you know discuss through some points. But the thing is recently because I've been thinking a lot about <clears throat> having a child and what does that mean to my life and all that, um, I suddenly became really scared. Because, um, to be honest, like I said just now, like way before, I'm really comfortable right now. I didn't know that things will change so much. I don't have to struggle. I don't have to fight for my rights or anything. And it's very comfortable. I would say. I would say I'm happy. I'm really very happy. And um, I am very grateful for things that have um happened that made everything this way. But. Because of that, I think there was a part of me that didn't want to give up this comfort. Not that I wanted to like achieve big things. Like for me, I was never like a big career woman or I wasn't like, oh, now you go here, here I get so, you go here I get so and I, want, I need to achieve this and that in my life or I need to work straight away after I, you know, I don't have all this kind of stuff and I don't know is it because I'm just a very boring person or a lot of things change me along the way but I honestly look to this marriage and Kugo Pogo Talyoso. Like I only looked at the goal and I really just ran towards that goal and now I reached it already. It's not that I feel meaningless, I feel very meaningful in terms of I reached my goal, but I think going forward, because there is no goal, I wanted to just kind of enjoy my rest time. So um recently I've been telling and giving a lot of unreasonable to me to him it's very unreasonable. Um request about like oh you know me like let's go here let's go there i mean i didn't tell him where i think that's why it makes it makes it even bigger to him because he don't know how much it will cost or i'll be like oh you know next year we need to attend this wedding and stuff like that and you need to attend this wedding so how are we gonna go you know if we have a kid and stuff and then i think that really triggered him because to him is how can you keep thinking about other people and not your family and that really hit me and it really struck me because I felt like yeah why ah uh, why ah uh, why Jeanette why are you like that uh? so like it made me think a lot about myself also and what made me this way and the other thing was um I think because I was scared and I wasn't ready to lose my comfort but because we made a agreement and decision that um we will try by when and when I wanted to do everything that comes to my mind, like out of my own will, just because I want, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do, you know, kind of thing. Because I always, not that I feel like I have to give it up after after having a kid, but then, kanyang, 원래는 예전에 하고 싶은 게할수 없어서 지금은 할수 있어서 하고 싶었어요. Never. No, I never. I had to give up a lot of things and what I really wanted to do to get here. So I feel like after marriage, 
if I feel like I want something, I want to do something, I want to hurry do it because I don't want to lose myself and I don't want to lose what I want because I think that's really precious to me and I do feel sad about it sometimes when I have to sacrifice it and stuff but then I mean in life, how can there be no sacrifice? If you want happiness, you have to sacrifice something, right? And coming here, I do feel happy. It's just that I think I've been focusing on the wrong things in life. So, um, yeah, so that was one point that um, came up in the quarrel. And I think it was really tough for me for the past few days is because Nokti had to go for Indonesia trip, right? And all this happened just before he was gonna board the plane. So basically we were in Chan. I just gave a very tolian, a very very black face to him. And then I said like no, it's not about you. It's just me. I just regret. I just regret this, regret that. And then like I just like just threw everything here. And I think because of that he really couldn't stand it anymore and I pushed his limits and he got really really mad and he didn't want to have any work with me. He just, I mean, okay, I asked him to please wait for me because like I was going to cry already and stuff and I was saying sorry but then he, he really sit there and listened to me but he wouldn't have anything to hear from me even though I apologize because I think he's really really old, like just crossed his limit and honestly Naughty has been really really nice to me like he never ever fights with me for anything he always does his best for me and he always sacrifices himself for me and I feel that's a very weita, what's weita? Like magnanimous, I don't know, very like mommy call as a person to sort of give in to me because I mean we're the same age there and the amount of things that he done and does I mean for me I would I wouldn't belittle my sacrifice and achievements that is not Big or what, but then he also done a lot for me la, and how to get us here. All thanks to his hard work on YouTube and um sacrifice and all his decisions la, that get us here. So <clears throat> after that, because he's not playing, I cannot contact him. I know he's very, very angry, right? I came home. Wow, I really couldn't do anything. And at that point, at the airport, the moment he left, I felt like, okay, there's really, really something wrong with me. And um, Whatever he said made a lot of sense. So I had to sort of figure it out. Like why did I do what I do? And um, I think it's very important to figure it out. Also because honestly, I have been praying um, to God about having a child. And I'm afraid. I don't know how to like deal with... Um, all the anxiety and stuff because I plan a lot and this is something so uncertain and you never know you know like I, I, I do ask around but the more I ask the more anxious I become and stuff like that and people want to say this say that not that I really get affected there's no pressure on me at all but I think it's just me as a one book three job. like I'm not a hundred percent perfectionist but maybe 95 percent you know okay so um I felt like okay Something's really wrong with me. We have to go home and we have to figure it out. So I came home. Um, I started to do my reflection. It's been really, really long since I did reflections of myself. And um, that is really, really my go-to. And I have something so messed up in my head. It really helps me to figure out what happened, why it happened, where did it start from, where it went wrong, blah blah blah, everything came out. So basically I spent the whole night. This is more like a, not advice, but then more of a lesson that I want to tell you guys that I have learned so that if you are going through LDR or some dating to marriage transition or you're newly married and you're struggling, I'm not sure if you're facing this problem but the main thing that I figured out through all the reflection is you don't want to bring your past self into your newly like begin life. Okay, so let, let me break it down. Okay, okay. So basically, for me, um, I think, like I said before, I had a lot of um, ideas and thoughts about how like 
I was supposed to come uh, about what I expected out of my marriage. Like, when I get there, I am going to get this, get that, I'm going to say this, say that. And even before that, the, that's how, where the kid comes to place. I felt that having a kid is so important because firstly, I did want to have a kid before I turned 30. That's number one. Secondly, I felt like having a kid was so important to secure my position in the Chang family because I'm sort of like, because there's hierarchy and stuff, right? So I'm the youngest son, wife. So like, I'm like really at bottom kind of thing. Um, not that they put me in the bottom, it's just, you know, it's just like that. It's just age things. It's just an age thing in Korea, okay? So I was here and then I felt like, okay, if I have a kid, Probably I'll have more say. I don't know what kind of say I want to have, but I don't know what I struggled with or so. I mean, I know, but I don't want to say everything out because I feel like it's a very personal thing. And um, everybody has struggles, right? So um, I that's the reason why I want to have a kid or so. Like, I feel that more than the happiness, my ideas sort of warped a bit to using a kid as like a way or a means to an end to get um, my recognition or something like that lah, okay, basically. So I think because of that, um, after I stepped into the marriage, like I said, it became a lot more comfortable. And then to me, it's like, oh, then since I don't you know, I don't even need a kid, right, to secure this comfort. So I think because of that, I became a, a bit more, not even less ready to have a kid kind of thing, okay. I was, I was, I think we will never be 100% ready. To conceive a child, it's a gift from God and in his timing and stuff like that. But I wasn't, I was even more not ready, okay? Period. So, um, I think because of all those thoughts that I have in the past and I brought it into the marriage, when everything changed, um, it didn't occur to me that um, I shouldn't bring this over or so, okay? Because it did not stay status quo, so many things change, but I still try to hold on to that past self of how I want to live my own life. I need to have this, I need to have that, blah, blah, blah. I think that brought a lot of hurt to Hanso because um, he's like, why you become like that leh, you know, and things like that. So um, I think that was a very, very big hit to him. And because it hit him, it hit me as well. Like, it really woke me up like, you know, kind of thing, like, yeah, that's the reason why I think I was most hurt because um, afterwards, uh, when I tried to talk to him, I told him I realized a lot of stuff and I wrote a really, really, really long letter to him about why I became like that. Okay, but he, he came back in the morning uh, after I was, I couldn't take it anymore, he did that. Uh, so in the morning, he sent me and then he's like, I read the message, but... I don't think you are gonna change. And my thought changed a lot about you. And when I heard that, I was even more broken. I was very, very devastated. Like, oh please, no, don't change, kind of thing. And then he got even more angry, I think, the more I say. And then what happened was um, the next day he said that, and then I was really sad. And because I was at my friend's wedding, I heard the marriage vows that they say, and I wanted to cry so badly at the wedding because um, the vows that they say was like um, I promise to love you and accept you through everything and stuff like that. Then when he said this kind of to me, I was just like, I may or see what I'm It's like I know my hope really is it, you know, because of what I've done. But then like I keep thinking back on myself, I became like this because of that one. And I already said I'm gonna do that. But then I think to him it's like again, again, you know, how can you do this again kind of thing. So. It's just very different perspective and I wish I can talk to him after he comes back. I'm not sure if you watch this video, the video will, will it be already up and then he will, you know, we will have figured it out already but I know we can, it's just that um, I wanted to tell you guys that um, that's the main lesson that I learned. That's the main part of um, this part of having a kid because um, to be honest right now, uh, things might change. I don't I don't really know about it. So I don't know whether I should a lot of people tell me I should release my expectation of myself of wanting to have a kid before 30. That's number one. I still cannot really do it so I, I don't really know how. Um, secondly, I do still struggle with the fear of it but I know that fear doesn't come from the Lord and um, I should just try to manage 
this whole thing in my mind. But then, I remember when I prayed to God and asked Him to help me. I believe this is sort of like a word or a sign from God telling me that um, maybe Jeanette, you, I really I wanted this to happen. Not that He is a giver of bad things, but He allows stuff to happen so that it will turn out for the good of His glory. So I believe that He allowed this to happen so that I can realize what I have become, who I have become, and so that I can unlearn everything in the chance that I really do have a kid. I can start from scratch again of how I really want to be a wife to Miss Naughty, how I want to be a good daughter-in-law, how I want to be a still good daughter to my family back in Singapore or friends, and then how I want to be a good mom to my future kid and stuff like that. So, um, I think, um, I'm filming this part and I'm sincerely talking about it and being honest and real here because I feel like we do look over stuff sometimes because we're all caught up in life and we don't have time to reflect and stuff but I think it's really important that we um, take time to rest and if, if you're not like me whereby you write and you figure out or pray and you figure out you have your own way to figure out what went wrong how it went wrong it's not about who's fault or pointing fingers but what is the main root problem of um, any quarrel and for me and Hanso I feel like it took us so long to get here to get here for me also because after the marriage then all this happened right so to f finally I figure out that I am the one that caused all this not that he didn't have a role to play because you know all problems you need two hands to clap also but all solution you also need two hands to clap but I think it's a lot about my expectations about stuff all the thoughts I have in my mind and because I overthink a lot all these thoughts are trapped here and um, today I listened to a sermon and I think the best takeaway from this sermon was that a gift from God can become a prison to you if you are dysfunctional you have dysfunctional thoughts and I think I have um, reached this point and have formed so, so many dysfunctional thoughts and attitudes and behaviors about what a marriage, my marriage should look like. I wouldn't say Korean marriage or anything because everybody is different. But then because of that, um, I think that brought up a lot more problems in like trivial matters. Until now, it's so, until it hit Hansel so hard that I realized he is hurting his like worth, his chajonshim, his confidence, and his just his whole being. Like, how come I always try so hard but my wife's not happy, you know, kind of thing. So I think I really pants on his soul. Like I really reflected a lot and um, this is the conclusion I came to. What I really really wanna say through this video is whether you are in an LDR or a relationship. There's a lot of um, selves that you can create, um, be it when you're dealing with a problem or when you're happy or when you're sad or anything. There are behaviors and stuff that happen at that moment, but it may at that time you may not have the capacity to think whether it is a right move or a wrong move because it comes up naturally. It's like a coping mechanism, like I said. But you have to be careful to rethink all these kind of thoughts of whether after you jump into marriage will it be a good coping mechanism because your role has changed, right? You're not a girlfriend anymore and you're part of a new family and your thoughts should change. So I think we should really learn a lot of things, especially in a newly wet life. Very, very thankful that it happened now. It's more of like a sign from God to prepare me towards this journey and I am very 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 thankful to figure this out so this is the reason why I want to share with you guys so you don't have to go through the same thing as me if you're listening through this video until this part okay so I'm very very thankful and I wish that when I look back on this video um I don't know a few years back or even when I'm pregnant or whatever if God bless me with a kid I will tell myself that I really tried my best and um, and that to my future self, 
um, you're doing fine, you're doing great, you don't have to worry so much, don't overthink and be careful about what you think. Always put your family first, always pray, always ask and seek God and um, yeah, and always be humble and grateful about things that happen in your life. I think it comes to the end of my video. <gasps> it's one hour, I'm sorry guys, I talk so much. I'm gonna cut out as much as I can but thank you so much for watching me today talk and blabber and eat ramyun but if you like more of this content I cannot guarantee you that I will keep producing this kind of content because deep talk is like I need to analyze a lot and figure things out a lot but maybe I can make short ones but maybe not one this long because then if not something has happened right and I wish nothing happened please but yes please pray for us and um thank you so much for joining me <laughs> this late night I don't know whatever time you watch it. I wish you um, all the best and um, we love you. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye.